Hi guys, come on in. I'm just trying to get them set up. So you guys can We are just about to go live. We are still preparing. All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's session of Exploring by the City of Paris. I'm Sarah, and I'll be your host for today. So for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, Exploring by the City of Pants is about five class events, conservation and adventure to classrooms across the world. Um, so today we have seven classrooms from across North America joining us with around 200 students. And we're very excited to learn more about SLAW. Our guest speaker today is Christian Spears. And at TTR, TRR, they have focused um, on the release of national wildlife since so before. They provide sanctuary, welcome, and treatment, rehabilitation, and possible release to the natural environment. They specialize in people, sloths, and owls. However, they have a large of wildlife for animals, porcupine, cats, pinkajous, parrots, and so forth. So thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, so how today's gonna work is we are live on YouTube. So anyone on YouTube, I'll be looking at the question bar. And, and uh, we'll have Peter just talk about the class. And after about 20 minutes, we'll get to the classrooms for some questions. So Peter, you can take it away. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Peter. I'm originally from Hungary. And I'm working at the Hi Guys. Um, so I'm working here at the Tuka Rescue Ranch since last year, September. I started to work here as a regular volunteer. Later on, I started to work as a tour guide. And now I'm doing tour guiding and also volunteer coordinating. So, first of all, uh, the Tuka Rescue Ranch started here in 2004 in Costa Rica with Leslie Hall. Because Leslie Hall was working here as a volunteer in a Maca project. But that project, didn't take any other animals. So she decided back then in 2004 to start her own rescue mission because she wanted to have for so many animals. So first of all, she started to take care of toucans here in north of San Jose. It's roughly 10 miles, we are north of San Jose, roughly 10 miles. And she started to rescue toucans. The problem was that many toucans been kept as pets because everyone knows they are so beautiful animals, but people were keeping them really badly. So she wanted to have to these animals. Later on, she started to take on many other birds. And in 2007, we received our first little sloth baby who was three weeks old. That was the very first mammal here at the Tukai Rescue Ranch in Costa Rica. And uh, from then, we started to take on more and more other animals, even cats, monkeys, and so many other creatures are on. So right now, we are a fully functioning rehabilitation and rescue center for all kinds of species from the country. Also, we have a fully functioning vet clinic, so that helps us to help with all the different animals when they arrive here injured, orphan, they need very special care. So from then, we can very nicely take care of them, fortunately. For the loss, what we received the very first loss, it was Mili. Her real name is Milagro in Spanish. And she was, as I mentioned, a three weeks old tiny baby. So back then, because Leslie didn't have so much experience with mammals before, especially with sloths, she contacted it to US zoos, and US zoos recommended her here, a local vet who's called Janet, and Janet is our leader vet today, and she's a slow specialist. Also, she is working with us on a day-to-day -day basis. She is on her maternity leave, but she still comes in at least twice a week. So first of all, a little bit about the sloth history I want to tell you about. In Costa Rica, we have two different sloths, but in a word, six different sloth species exist. 
and also some ancient kind of sloths, which are, doesn't exist anymore because they died out roughly 15,000 years ago. But those sloths, the very first sloths on the earth, they started to develop roughly 100 million years ago. They got divided on different branches because we have different type of sloths. And the closest relatives of the sloths are armadillos and anteaters. Uh, in the US, you have armadillos as well. Maybe many of you have seen them. So it's interesting how different they look like. Also, those Asian sloths, what I was just talking about, those sloths were giant sloths. They were huge. Their size were like, like an elephant. They didn't hang on the trees. They didn't climb on the trees. They didn't climb on the trees. So back then, they were walking on the ground. They were walking on the ground so because the trees just wouldn't be able to take them. So back then, we had some other type of sloths. They have had another type of sloths, which were borrowing sloths. They made huge tunnels in the soil, and they were living in there, like the bears right these days. So it was very, very interesting. Also, some sloths developed kind of maritime lifetime. They were living by the sea, they were going in the sea, and they were eating like the manatees are eating different kind of vegetation from the sea. Right now, the different kind of sloths are all living on trees. They are arboreal species. We don't have any sloths which is living on the ground. So right now, what we have in Costa Rica is two different kind of species. We have a two-fingered and three-fingered sloths. The two different sloths, that's why it's called two-fingered and three-fingered, because even though their official name is three-toed and two-toed sloths, but because the name is translated from Spanish, we call them finger sloths, because dedos in Spanish, can mean three fi uh, finger or two. So what we have here, what you see on the pictures, uh, on the video, those are two finger sloths. And it's interesting because both kind of sloths actually has three toes, but this one what you see has two fingers. And the other one, what you see, for example, in a Zootopia movie, which is always smiling, they have this Zorro-like eyeliner, and they are much more slow. Those are the three finger sloths. The two sloths are very different, not just by how many fingers do they have. They also look very different face structure wise. This one what you see, you have, you can see they have kind of piggy nose a little bit. The other one has a more like a little bit of doggy looking nose. And usually their nose are black, while this one you can see is more brownish one. Also, the number of bones what they have in their body is very different because the two-fingered sloths, what you see now, they have just five bones in their neck. So their neck is very short and is not too flexible. Why most of the mammals, including us, or even the giraffes, has seven vertebrae bone in their neck. So it's interesting like how evolution works because these guys has a very short neck while the three finger sloths has a very long neck because they have nine bones in their neck. And that allows them to turn their head around, many cases, 180 degrees. So that's why you see on many pictures or even nature documentaries, when they are hanging from the tree, they are looking you face to face how you look a human. Or when they are on the uh, trunk of the tree, they can look on their back. So it's very interesting how these things develop. Also, the two-fingered sloth has no tail at all, while the three-fingered sloth has a tiny tail, and they use that tail to make a little channel when they pee and poo. So with that one, is interesting because the sloths are not going to the toilet too often, is which means a two-fingered sloth, an adult sloth, normally going to the toilet once a week, once in 10 days, or maybe once in two weeks. So that's why they do this, because they have to go down from the tree to the toilet. And is that's why, because their pee and poo is very smelly. And if they're going to do their things on the tree, it's going to be a big smell trail for other animals, like signaling, like, hey, I'm here, eat me. So that's why the sloths are going down from the tree to the tree trunk to the toilet. And they prefer to do this in rainy nights. That's why in a rainy night, because then even that smell, what they produce down in the ground, they get washed away almost immediately. 
So when the sloth goes down to the toilet is a very interesting behavior because they're slowly going down. Then they do a little bit of a belly dancing at the tree trunk while they are holding with their hands the tree trunk. And then they close their eyes and they start to pee and poop. The pee and adult sloths actually can hold up two liters or four pints of pee. So can you imagine like an animal which is 12 pounds overall can hold up four pounds of pee and two pounds of poo. So it's a very long process. And this causing the problem in the nature because these days, especially with stray dogs, many, many sloths getting attacked, unfortunately. So that's their main predation basically today. The other differences between the two different sloths, interestingly, they are living in a different times of the day, active different times of the day. The two finger sloths, what you see now, those are more active nighttime, even though they are active sometimes daytime as well, while the three finger sloths is mostly a daytime creature because they live active in a different parts of the day that's why most likely that's why their coloration is very different as well and the fur looks very different too because while there's two finger sloths what you see now they are more brownish chocolateish kind of color uh, they can hide uh, daytime very well like that because you can see they are very similar color than the tree trunk so that's why because they are sleeping daytime and they try to find a place on a tree where the branches are in Y or V shape, so they can suspend their butt or their back there and they can sleep very comfortably while they are hanging another branch. The three finger sloths, which is active daytime, they have a little bit longer fur, more wirish looking fur, and also that fur contains most of the time a lot of algae and other creatures as well, like moss and bugs, which are connecting their life cycle to the sloth pooing session. And it's, that's why those sloths develop this kind of greenish color with algae because they are moving at the daytime and they have to hide between the green leaves daytime. On that fur, they have even a kind of groove, like a little tunnel even on the fur itself. So it extends the surface of the, of the fur so they can grow even more algae in their fur. Because they grew that algae, they became very greenish color. And that algae is not they are not uh, uh, bad for them, that algae. Actually, they make good use of it. Not just because it hides them in the canopy, also because they leak the algae as well. And they get a lot of minerals, nitrogen, and other things for themselves as well. So because the two sloths are living in a, active in a different part of the day, they eat different food too. While the three finger sloths, that is the one which is the greenish one, eats only leaves and has only just grinder teeth to chew up the leaves, uh, they have a very, very slow metabolism. The sloths has a multi-chamber stomach and they inhale a lot of bacteria to digest all that very fibrous leaves what they eat. So like the cows and sheep, they have these four chambers in their belly and slowly the food passes through that. From the sloth eating a bite of food to pull it out it takes one month roughly. That is how slowly they digest the food. The two finger sloths what you see now they are a little bit different even their teeth are different because these guys has fangs interestingly just like the dogs has these fangs. One of our person actually calls them the staple removers because they are very, very sharp. And because their older teeth are ever growing, both kind of sloths has ever growing teeth, those teeth are super sharp. They can bite really nastily and they have a very dirty mouth as well. Because first of all, they don't brush their teeth. Second of all, because they have all that bacteria as a stomach, those are moving up to their mouth as well. So while the three finger sloths eat only leaves, the two finger sloths, what you see on the picture, those are omnivore animals, which means they are eating everything. They are eating in nature, fruits, leaves, bird chicks, bird eggs, even little lizards if they can catch them. And also, uh, because they have this multiple kind of food, they have a little bit faster metabolism. They can uh, maintain their body temperature a little bit better because they have more energy 
So this is connected again with their living style, living habitat. So the little slosses, the two finger sloss, like that baby, for example, what you see is lives normally almost everywhere in Costa Rica, except the super high elevations, which are which are can be even 9,000 feet high. We received loss from super high elevation from the Turialba volcano, which no one knows loss lives even there. So because they have the more energy, they maintain their body temperature better, and that's why they are able to live almost anywhere in Costa Rica. Why the three fingers plus, which eat on the leaves, they have a different habitat. They much prefer to live on the lower altitude next to the sea when the temperature is much higher and also much more humid. So they don't have to spend that much energy to maintain their own body temperature. Uh, the two different sloths have behavior-wise other different skills. For example, the two finger sloths, what you see in the picture, can be very, very aggressive animals. That's why they are not good pets at all. You don't want to hold a sloth, even a baby sloth, because their claws are very sharp, their teeth are very sharp, they have teeth basically from there when they born, and they can bite you. We also want to sloths keep as wide as possible, so we don't handle them. We keep them buckets, as you can see on the picture, and also we keep them on made structures, but we take them to exercise on the trees what you've seen before. The three-fingered sloths, because they are much more relaxed nature, they are not too aggressive, they are a little bit easier to handle if you have to handle, but because every single sloth, like you see here in our release program, because our aim is to release everything back to nature which is possible, we handle them as small almond as necessary. So the two different sloths, because they are very different, they have a different speed of growing up as well. Interestingly, the three finger sloth wins off from milk from the mom before the two finger sloth and also separates from the mom very fast, relatively to the other one. The three finger sloth lives with their mom roughly a year and a half, maybe just 15, 16 months. And is that's why, because they eat only leaves, they don't need that much protein. They don't suckle, actually uh, sloths don't suckle. Um, they have much less milk than the two finger sloths. So for us, it's a little bit faster process to release a three finger sloth because that takes roughly for us a year and a half, while a two finger sloth to release, it takes roughly two years. So it's not, not a fast process at all. The sloth pregnancy is roughly 11 to 12 months. And then the baby clings on the mom for five, six months. Then they move together in the forest for another year, year and a half. So that's why it takes us as long as two years as well to release the sloth. We have a school system for them. While they are having milk, when we give them milk, that's raw goat's milk with a dash of pedialyte in it, which is basically kind of sport drink for babies. It contains so much minerals and essential vitamins for this animal. So what we give milk to these animals, these are usually pinkish color because of that uh, vitaminish liquid. So while we are giving milk to these creatures, we use syringes to feed them because in nature, they don't suckle from the mom. They don't have the muscles around their mouth to suckle. So we have to use syringes and the nipple and the sloth basically has to lick off the milk from the nipple because that is what they do in nature as well. From their moms, they just lick off the milk from the nipple because the mom is releasing the milk voluntarily. That's why we use goat's milk for the slosses because it's naturally lactose free. I'm sure most of you know like lactose free, so many people cannot drink regular cow's milk because they have some material in it that can cause belly problems. It's exactly the same with the sloss. That's why we use goat's milk. And also the goat's milk is much more rich in uh, fat, protein and other matters as well. So the glitter guys, when they wean off from milk, they do that absolutely naturally. We don't have to force them. That happens between six and eight months of age. Then they start to get scrambled egg for protein supply because the two finger sloths, as I mentioned, eats a lot of protein, including bird chicks, bird eggs, lizards in nature. 
So to them, to grow up really nicely and we make sure they are healthy, they get scrambled egg from us. So when they finish the elementary school, when it's finishing having milk, then they are in high school and they are getting mostly here leaves, cooked green beans, carrots, chayote, which is a local vegetable. And also they get the scrambled egg once or twice a week. When they are big enough, then we bring them to the our release site. That is roughly a year and a half age. And then they are uh, over there in big cages. And because our release site in Zaratiti, which is in the Caribbean side of the country, on the Caribbean slopes, very close to a national park, uh, we can release them and raise them really nicely. So while they are in those huge cages in the release site, they are getting a lot of natural leaves so they can learn which leaves they can eat which not causing them problems so then when they reach roughly two years of age they got a radio collar on their neck and we open a part of the cage and they can go in and out naturally for a while this is what we call soft release program uh, after they got released with a radio collar on their neck they are still having uh, monitored, they're still being monitored for five more months at least. That is the people are doing them who is working with the SLOS Institute and because we have the program saving SLOS together and those people are volunteering as well and monitoring a SLOS at night in 10 hour shifts in the jungle because as I mentioned before the two finger SLOS is a nocturnal animal. So I think I said all the basic knowledge about the SLOS. So if you have any question, I'm happy to receive any question from anyone. That's great. Thanks, Peter. I actually learned so You're much. Welcome. I don't know about anybody else, but I had no idea that there were SLOS the size of elephants at one point on this planet. Um, so I'm sure the question period will be great. Why don't we yeah. start um, with Miss Presley's class? who yeah. just joined us last minute. Um, yeah. Where are you guys on here? Ah, there you are. Hi, Miss Presley's class. Hello. Hello, guys. How are you doing today? Hi. 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 Also, How big can sloths get? How big can sloths get? Did you hear that? How big can sloths get? The, is really depends on which kind of sloths. Is in the six different species, the smallest one are the pygmy sloths. Those are roughly uh, five pounds weight when they are allowed. The sloths what we have here in Costa Rica. These are one of the biggest ones, especially the two finger sloths. They can grow up to uh, 14 pounds of weight, the male ones. The girls are a little bit smaller. All right. And so then let's head to Miss James's class for a group of grade ones. We have yeah. In Texas. We've got a big group here. I think yeah. Your, is my, your guys' mic is muted on your end. If someone wants to come forward and ask a question, you guys can do so. You have to unmute the mic. There you go. Taylor, what's the question? What does sloth feeder look like? What is a sloth's favorite food? Uh, say again? I really badly hear that. Sorry. What is a sloth's favorite food? The, the favorite food is the potato leaves normally. It's a local tree, which uh, that is their favorite. And also they like so many different kind of leaves. Actually, the two finger sloth eats more than 40 kind of leaves in some cases. And in that one, they always try to munch on the young leaves on the trees because those are more nutrition than the other super fibrous older leaves. But they are eating a lot of things. Here is depends on the sloths because we give them uh, cooked green beans and carrots. Some of them love the uh, carrots so much, actually they poo orange color sometimes because they eat that much carrot. But in the natural food what they have, they really love the poro leaves. leaves. Amazing. I think we saw them eating some of these um, pink flowers while one of these guys was sitting. Yeah. 
The pink flowers that you've seen, those are hibiscus flowers, and that is basically sloth chocolate. They love it so much because of the nectar in it. They have a sweet smell also. And that is how we can encourage them sometimes to do their natural behavior, move a little bit more, exercise more. But other than that, we don't give them much hibiscus flower, just when we have to trigger their movement a little bit. Amazing, very cool. All right, so let's head to Miss Grin Grinwald's um, okay. grade twos. They're coming out of Burlington, Ontario. If you guys wow. want to ask a question, you guys can do so. I can't hear anyone from there. We haven't gotten any questions yet. We're just waiting. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes they need medicine. Sometimes they arrive in a really bad shape. When sloth arrives here, mostly they are orphaned, and many times we have no idea what happened to them. Many times the sloths are just falling off from their moms. And if the mom is not retrieving them, they just stay under the tree until someone finds them. Hopefully, if someone finds them, who is bringing them here? Other than that, uh, when we receive babies, they always get a medical checkup. They always get a chest X-ray to make sure their lungs are clear. Sometimes they arrive here with some infection, uh, digesting problem, and then we have to give them medicine, just like we have to give to humans. We have to give them sometimes antibiotics, and then it's very problematic most of the times because they have to get Pre and pre uh, probiotics as well, just like you humans, when you have a really bad cold and the doctor describes, prescribes you antibiotics, you will have to take prebiotic shots or some kind of drinks which contains a lot of bacterial, live bacterial, which helps you later to digest the food that you've eaten. Very interesting. Okay, so we're just gonna head to the YouTube live chat. Um, okay. We have around six classrooms joining us live on YouTube right now. Um, okay. One of them, um, they have a lot of questions about the sloth we're looking at right now. One of them is a grade six and seven class from Toronto, Ontario. Uh -huh. They want to know why the baby sloths are contained in a bucket at first. And Karen Davis wants to know how old is the sloth on camera? The, on, the sloth on the camera is roughly three months old. And that's why we put them in bucket because we don't want to hold them. So we give them a lot of blankets and sometimes even stuffed animal. And also we put the bucket on, on a heat pad or we put hand warmers in the bucket so they can keep warm. And that's why we keep them in the bucket because in nature in this age, they don't wander off from their mom. So they like to just grab on something fluffy, furry. So they feel in comfort and also they've been kept warm. That makes sense. Okay, let's head to Katie, who's joining us today. Katie has a question to ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, in Canada, most of our wild babies are born in the springtime, but because you're so warm, do you have babies born all year long? We, we have babies born all year long. We have like more frequented times of the year, especially when there's a lot of fresh leaves coming out from the trees, uh, which is basically the early wet season. But other than that, we have babies all year around. Some parts of the year more, some parts of the year less. So it's not like in the places where you have four seasons. In Costa Rica, we have two seasons. We have a wet season and dry season. So it's more connected to that but sloths give birth all year around, just in different numbers. Okay, great question. So let's head to Miss Bellin's class. She has a group of grade threes coming up in Ontario. If you guys want to unmute your mic and ask a question, you have the floor. All right. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Quacho. How old do sloths grow up to? is depends on the kind of sloth. The two-fingered sloth has a longer lifespan. They live roughly 30 years. The three-fingered sloth has a shorter lifespan. They are more delicate, more fragile. They live between 23, 25 in nature. 
But if you go to a zoo, most likely you're going to see two finger sloths. And those two finger sloths in captivity, because they kept really well, they have more, not healthy food, but better quality food. And also they don't have to forage that much. Those sloths can live more than 40 years in captivity. Wow, we have sloths on our hands. Okay, so let's go to Mr. Van Roy's class. Yep. These are a, grade, a group of grade three and fours coming out of mm -hmm. Belgium, Canada. Hi, guys. You guys can ask a question. How many sloths have you released? Uh, how many sloths did we release? Our number is just under 100 right now. Actually, I asked myself, Leslie, not too long ago about this because I didn't know it either. And it's interesting because from that roughly 100 sloths, which are all of them living in nature, some of them are pregnant already. And we even released sloths, which had, we have to amputate one of the legs because they were so badly injured. So it's a very interesting question because the sloth's core strength is in their belly area. If they are able to move on three limbs, three legs, we still can release them. So we released two sloths, which unfortunately lost one of its legs and they are still doing really well in the wild. So it's a very interesting question how many sloths we released because the number is always growing. As soon as it's possible, we release the sloths and we always have sloths in our release program. Right now at the release site at the Tukai restaurant in the Central Valley of Costa Rica, we take care of roughly 45 sloths these days. So oh, except a couple of them, which one of them is blind and some of them which are arrived before we had the sloths release program, all of them are gonna be released back to the wild. Okay, so let's head to Miss. Russet's class, a group of five and six, you guys can ask your question. Yeah. Um, how long do you have to keep the baby sloths in the bucket before they're allowed to be freely up in the trees? Actually, um, while they are at the Tucan Rescue Ranch, when they are having milk, we still give them buckets all the time. Uh, so while they are in the bucket, so when they are really small, roughly three months old, like that one, what you see on the picture, they are living in buckets. Then we put later on the buckets under a structure where they can start to climb. So they naturally start to climb around on the structure. First, they are not going far, just hanging on a, on a bamboo line and they are moving back to their bucket. That is where they feel comfortable. So they won't keep them buckets anymore at all when they wean off from milk and they move into our high school. Even when they are high school students for us, which is from roughly six, eight months of age, depends on the sloths, we put hammocks for them on the cages where they live because those are still, still relatively small sloths and they still like to cuddle each other and at similar age, the sloths are being kept together so they can cuddle each other in the hammock. Sloths are very solitary animal. So when they are growing up, they start to disperse from each other. They start to like each other less and less. So when they are released, they are not hanging together with our friend, with their friends. So back to the original question, they are in a bucket roughly till they are six months old. But that bucket for the six months from the three months normally is under a structure so they can start to climb on them. And they are on the trees, totally on the trees when they are going our release site because in that cage where they are going to be released, we have big trees there. And that is where they really learn how to climb on the sick branches as well because what we have in TRR, uh, the exercise ground for them. They are smaller trees because we have to retrieve the sloths from here. It is raining or bad weather, so we have to reach them. Okay, great questions we got going on. Um, one question coming in from the YouTube live section. Eric Down mm -hmm. wants to know, how fast do sloths move and how big is the biggest sloth you have? 
our biggest loss is Thai, and that loss is roughly 14 pounds of weight. And the loss can be depends on the loss. Of course, the three fingers loss are much slower, but the two fingers loss can move relatively fast. If uh, you go to YouTube and you're gonna look up the loss Ironman games, there we have uh, an exercise place exercising thing for the sloth, which is a one meter dash. And one of our sloths did that one meter dash just in a few seconds. So one meter is one yard, so it's really easy to can't like do that. So they are can they can move really, really fast if they want, but that's very exhausting to them. So they much prefer to move slowly because that is how they save a lot of energy. Okay. So we're, we're just at the end of our time here. So I just wanted to say, Peter, thank you for joining us and taking the time out of your day to highlight these. Anytime. Amazing. I think everybody's learned something. And if anybody wants to, um, could we have all the classes say a big thank you? To thank you so much to you guys for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys.